Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. This is the November garden checklist video. I've done one of these uh, January through October, and I'll have one more to do in December uh, after this one. Uh, I will not possibly cover everything that needs to be done in a garden uh, in, a, in a video like this. There's certainly things I'm gonna forget. And if you can come up with anything after you've watched the video, uh, make a comment down below uh, with that item, and it may help people watching this video in the future. Again, I hope these have been helpful, and so uh, let's get started. Uh, November is, uh, I'm, first of all, I'm in Raleigh, North Carolina, Zone 7B, so I kind of split the difference between areas that get much colder, obviously, and then areas to my south that you know, have very little winter at all. I'm somewhere in the middle of that, uh, and definitely this is a great time uh, to be putting in hardy trees and shrubs and perennials, and by hardy, I mean uh, not marginal in your area. The only thing, the only exceptions to planting that I have uh, for the fall is uh, things that are marginally hardy. I don't want to put them in the ground and immediately stress them with cold. Uh, so those things I kind of reserve for spring if it's barely hardy in your area or if you question its hardiness. Otherwise, I'm sinking everything in the ground uh, right now for sure. Um, this is a great time of year um, as you're shopping in the fall to see fall color. Uh, on plants, what they're going to do in the fall, how they're going to, uh, you know, how they're going to look through the winter time. Uh, I've said this in pretty much every video this year. Uh, we tend to do a lot of our shopping in the spring, and we only get things that are, you know, kind of flowery in the spring and, and look great in the spring, and we don't really consider other other times of the year. So shopping this time of year allows that, you know, how can I make my winter garden uh, look better? And uh, certainly, uh, and that. Also uh, would transition me into, you know, you can, a, a lot of us can put in pansies and snapdragons and dianthus, and I've been doing that. Uh, I've got videos up on my channel from the last uh, week and a half or two of, of putting in some fall color. Uh, there's some winter flowering um, uh, uh, perennials as well. So uh, hellebores is an example, are super, super early spring flowering things that you can put in. And then that translates over to, you know, November is the time to be putting in most of your bulbs. And I'll have some bulb planting videos coming up on my channel uh, very soon. Uh, pretty much through the month of November is when we want to get those things uh, in the ground. You will see lots of bulb planting videos uh, during the month of November on my channel. And uh, for some of us, though, in the south, uh, uh, things like tulips, uh, we actually have to cold treat them. So if you're planning on doing tulips and you're in zone like 7B, or uh, warmer, uh, you want to, uh, you'll, you'll, I'll, I'll be talking about that in upcoming videos as well. I've got some tulips in my uh, refrigerator. The tulips are gonna be taking up the vast majority of the bottom of my refrigerator over the course of the next uh, couple of months to get them cold treated before they go in the ground. As you're planting your bulbs, you may want to uh, grab a piece of paper and mark down where you're putting them in the yard. Uh, just draw out some sort of some sort of a diagram of the space and make sure that you're marking where bulbs go so that you don't then turn right around and go buy a you know, seven gallon shrub and dig them out of the ground in the process of uh, planting them. That, that's a good idea. Same thing with your perennials in your yard, the things that go completely dormant. You may want to uh, have some documentation of, of, where the, of where those things are. Definitely coming up on the best time of year to start thinking about transplanting things, you know, sometime between November, uh, December, January, February, these are going to be the uh, best transplanting months. And so as things go completely dormant, you know, stop putting on any growth, it's going to be time to move those things that you want to move. Frequently, I will actually go and uh, cut around the uh, drip line of the plant uh, with a shovel and just kind of take, you know, cut, cut some of the roots around it and then kind of leave it in place and then come back in February or March, you know, before the uh, before it warms up and actually move them. I just kind of, uh, I, 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 I prepare to move it. And, uh, you know, I, I let the plant live with less roots for a little while in the same space it's sitting in and then move them later. Uh, we can transition and you'll see me coming up um, in November. I'm gonna do some microgreens uh, videos. I've got a light uh, rack system in the house and I'm gonna grow some microgreens and set, you know, where I, where I can't grow as many edible things outside, I will transition some of those things inside and I'll show you guys uh, some of that if you're following along with the channel. Uh, I do have uh, lots of cool season vegetables in the ground. If you're, uh, if you're in an area, let's say from, you know, from zone seven and down, you can probably still continue to plant lettuce and um, broccoli and, and, and some of those cool season vegetables, but, um, you probably want to buy them as plants uh, at this point. Um, I did all of mine from seed, but I did them a long time ago. And so it takes that, that period of time from seed to, 
you know, a plant that can go in the ground takes up a lot of the time that you may have that's still warm enough to be growing them. So at this point, I'd probably transition to finding them as plants and putting them in the ground. But, um, you know, that's going to be uh, arugula and kale and lettuces and, you know, all those, all those kind of edible greens. Uh, this is a, a great time of year to be growing those. If you did do those fall leafy vegetables from seed, uh, make sure you're thinning the uh, seedlings. Uh, typically, I'll put two or three seeds in each cell and then you know let the uh let the one that's most vigorous uh, kind of survive and uh, cut the other ones out uh, don't plant them where there's two or three uh in each cell because it just we have a limited amount of time uh this time of year you know make sure they have plenty of space and uh get, getting plenty of light don't want them competing against one another uh, especially uh especially in the fall uh, this is definitely the time to be planting uh, onions and garlic and leeks and shallots. Uh, this, is, uh, th this is definitely the time of year to do that. And cool season herbs like dill and cilantro and parsley. Be on the lookout for caterpillars on your uh, cool season vegetables, uh, especially broccoli and kale. Uh, you'll, 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 you'll see the um, cabbage moths especially laying, uh, laying on them this time of year. And those caterpillars uh, need to be removed. They can cause significant damage pretty quickly. You can do it by hand or you can use uh, BT uh, as an alternative. Uh, one other thing is I'm kind of prepared over here. I've got a structure uh, over the top of all of my cool season vegetables and I can lay some sort of plastic over it to extend the season. Uh, you know, just kind of be prepared for that. You can get several more weeks typically. I have not gotten a frost here yet in my area. I'm right here at the end of October. Any time now, I'm going to get the first frost, and I'm, I want to be prepared to uh, cover those things, extend the season, because typically I'll get that first frost, and then it'll be another week or two before I get another one, so I can definitely extend that season uh, easily uh, by, by having a simple piece of plastic laying around for a, a night or two. I got a little ahead of myself on the cool season vegetables and didn't talk about finishing up the uh, summer vegetables. Uh, just a couple weeks ago or so, I uh, ripped out the last of my uh, tomatoes. I've still got some peppers uh, over here. And if you're gonna collect any of the seed on those things, it's, it's also time to do that. Uh, most of the, the remaining fruits that have matured would be the ones you would collect the seed from. And that would be the case with any of these annuals or perennials or you know throughout your yard there's probably opportunities to collect seed and you can store them in uh, glass jars and then of course you can go ahead and just tear it out once you've uh, collected the uh, fruits that you're going to collect the seed from or the last of the fruits that are on the plant and then you know if you're not converting to a uh, cool season vegetables uh, like i have you can use the leaves in your yard uh, to cover that space just put some sort of covering uh, don't leave it as bare soil uh, through the winter. Don't let allow the weeds to just take it over, you know, for the uh, winter months. Things like henbit and chickweed will take off very quickly if you just leave bare dirt. But it's a great use of your leaves uh, that are falling off your trees to uh, insulate that ground where your vegetable garden is. Uh, moving on to uh, dividing uh, perennials, uh, the, the, the plants that are uh, going to sleep right now, uh, the herbaceous things, the non-woody plants in your yard. This is a great time of year to be dividing those things. Uh, this is going to be hostas and daylilies and coneflowers and black-eyed Susans and on and on. This would be the time of the year where you can still see them uh, and you can grab them out of the ground and cut them and divide them and you know, spread them out into the yard or give them to neighbors. If you had ones that had just gotten so crowded on themselves that they underperformed, it's a good idea to go in and dig them up and just thin them, uh, if nothing else. And again, you know, give them away or, you know, um, spread the love uh, w with those kinds of things. Um, you know, cutting perennials back, you know, you can definitely deadhead them. I like to leave the seed heads on a lot of the perennials uh, through uh, you know, th through the month of November because a lot of the birds continue to uh, eat some of those seeds. Uh, you want to be careful with the, you know, cutting perennials down to the ground. You know, when the, when frost or freeze uh, knocks them completely back, uh, you can definitely, the ones that are super cold hardy, hosta always comes to mind because it's so, so hardy. It's, it's super easy to go through there and clean those up if you want to. Uh, some of the woodier perennials, uh, uh, butterfly bush definitely comes to mind. Some people consider it a shrub. Some people consider it a perennial because we do cut it back pretty hard. I don't cut those woodier perennials back until late uh, spring, um, or, or I mean late winter or early spring, uh, just because some of those things actually have hollow stems on them and we can get water down in those stems and uh, that freeze thaw during the winter can cause some, uh, cause some issues. Unlikely to kill them. Um, but it can slow them down uh, the, ne the next spring for sure. So, um, I, you know, I go with I go with caution on that. If it's a if it's a particular thing you have in mind as to wh wh when you want to cut it back, 
you may want to uh, Google that and uh, just wait. But like I say, as a rule, the kind of, uh, the ones that kind of become mush, uh, and you know, uh, that's gonna be daylilies and hostas and that, those kinds of things, um, those leafier things. Um, I'll go ahead and clean those up, uh, re-mulch over that area and get it prepared, um, get it looking good uh, and ready for next spring. The woodier things, I will typically leave in place, just kind of live with, and sometime in late winter, I'll go and uh, get them cleaned up before they start coming back out again for spring. One other thought on your perennials uh, going dormant or you're dividing them, uh, you can mark with golf tees uh, kind of where they are if you're doing additional planting you know, to make sure that you're not, again, digging something out of the ground. Those golf tees will also work for areas that you've put uh, the bulbs into, backing up to when I was talking about that earlier. Just, it's a simple way to mark things uh, in your yard so that you don't go stick a shovel in and dig them, and dig them out uh, by accident. Definitely November is gonna be the time for those of you who are in colder areas that need to dig out some of the, uh, uh, some of the tubers like dahlias and uh, caladiums and elephant ears. Uh, those, ten those tender things that you need to uh, remove from the ground to protect them uh, for the following spring, it's definitely the month to do that. Um, I'm kind of in the transition where a lot of those things can be left in the ground, but some of them, uh, some of them can't be from about 7B uh, and in uh, warmer areas. But those of you who are north of me are definitely digging out most of those, uh, most of those tender things to try to save them for the following spring. Okay, so let's move on to uh, maintenance. So we all know the transition here from uh, summer and early fall to late fall and winter has a heck of a lot of maintenance. You know, the trees are losing their leaves, your plants are losing their leaves. Uh, I, like I've already talked about, you know, you're cleaning out a vegetable garden perhaps, you're cleaning out uh, annuals that are starting to die, maybe transitioning over to other annuals. So just a lot of transition uh, this time of year. I put those leaves to good work. I, I think it's important that uh, we don't let organic material just walk off of, you know, walk off of the property. So if you have trees that are dropping leaves, uh, you can use them as mulch. Um, I've got a, a maple out here in the front yard from the neighbor's yard that's dropping leaves, and I'm just going to leave them where they are. I've got a little bit of mulch I'm going to cover them with, and that's the way I'm going to treat those. Uh, other leaves in the yard that pile up under plants, I'll rake those out, and I've got a little. Uh, um, I've got a little drum uh, thing that you can put the leaves in that cuts them up, it reduces the size of them, and I'll use that material on top of the vegetable garden, and I'll put it all to good use. Um, you don't have to buy anything if you already have a lawnmower. You can pile the leaves up and use the lawnmower to chew them up and then use them as mulch um, you know, from there. Or again, just leave them whole. If you have an area that you don't care how it looks, just use the leaves, you know, on, you know, you know you know, put, put several inches of them in a, in a space that it doesn't, I had somebody ask me the other day, you know, they had an area that didn't matter how it looked. So, you know, use them uh, just as whole leaves. And this transitions to um, uh, any diseased plants that you had during the summertime. Let's don't put those on the uh, compost pile. Uh, so that would be vegetable plants or flowering plants, anything that's got powdery mildew or obvious disease issues, obvious leaf spot issues on your hydrangeas. Um, let's get that material cleaned up as it's falling off the plants, remulch underneath them, and then dispose of that stuff not in your, not in your compost bin, um, but um, what other way you'd have to uh, dispose of them. But again, um, I don't let a lot of organic material leave this yard. I, I prefer to uh, reuse it and uh, use it for feed, uh, to feed the plants the next year. One other thought I have on the uh, leaves is if they've blown up under uh, some of your plants and you know they end up, you know, they can end up a foot thick, I don't think that's very good for um, potential disease issues, especially if you have roses and fruit plants, that kind of thing. I would go in there and get most of those out from under it and then maybe grind them and then you can reuse them there, but just reduce the uh, mass so that it's just not up on the, uh, not up on the plant and uh, trapping any diseased leaves that your roses may have had or your fruit plants may have had. So one thing that's been in every one of these checklists this year is obviously weeding. Uh, and uh, this is the time of year when henbit and chickweed and some of the uh, winter weeds actually germinate. And then they kind of go crazy in the late winter, early spring. But if you're seeing things germinate now, that's likely uh, what it is. And um, it's easier to get rid of those things now. We don't want any bare dirt uh, in the garden. And so I talked about mulch in every one of these videos this year. But of course, as we're going to transitioning toward winter, um, the uh, benefit of regulating soil temperature becomes more important and also regulating water and I didn't talk about in all the planting that I discussed earlier uh, in the video about watering 
uh, October and November tend to be pretty dry for me uh, here in the southeast unless we're getting some sort of tropical system. And I've seen that, you know, over the last uh, week or two uh, where it's definitely the air's much drier and uh, I'm watering. Um, here, here I am right here at the end of October and I think that will probably continue uh, into November. At some point later toward in the winter, um, most of the plants will have stopped using water and it won't be important, but uh, right this minute I'm actually having to do some uh, watering in the yard, so I think that's something you want to monitor for. For those of you who don't plan on doing any planting uh, this, this fall and are planning on doing it in the spring, you can certainly do the bed prep uh, this time of year. You can go ahead and clean out uh, grassy areas that you want to convert to a landscape space or a vegetable space or whatever you're going to do with them next year. You can put down a layer of compost, you can use the leaves we've been talking about. You can ground, ground or unground and cover those spaces up and get them ready for uh, next spring. Just again, don't leave the dirt uh, bare uh, because uh, you will end up, of course, with it uh, covered in weeds uh, by that time of year. Any plants that you're going to be tearing out, you know, this would be a great time of year to go ahead and, and just get the space ready uh, and planned and uh, work through your planning uh, for next spring. I've said this in all the fall videos, uh, pruning you have to be super careful with. There's things that can be pruned uh, during the uh, winter months and things that can't. Uh, there are early flowering spring things that we definitely don't want to be uh, pruning on this time of year. So it's best to identify the plant uh, before you do any uh, general pruning on anything. Um, and most of your pruning that you do in the winter time would be in the late winter anyway. Uh, but of course, you know, cleaning out dead limbs and dead pieces off of plants, um, you know, doing that kind of pruning, you could do that kind of any time of the year. And while you're out there doing maintenance, you might as well, uh, you know, go ahead and clean any, any dead material out of your plants. So if you follow my channel, you know, I talk very little about turf, but uh, of course, uh, November, if you haven't yet on your cool season turf, uh, this is the time of year to, uh, you know, to, to be seeding and aerating and fertilizing. Uh, my warm season turf here, my zoysia here, is in the process of going dormant. Um, definitely can tell even in the last week or so that it's going to sleep, so there's really not a lot of maintenance to do here. But cool season grasses, there's a lot of maintenance to do. But all turf, whether it's warm season or cool season, we don't want leaves sitting on it. So, <clears throat> you know, putting the mower on its highest setting and going through and just ta and picking those leaves up. If you have a bagger or if you have a mulching mower, just mulch them, you know, right in place and blow them off. Whatever's needed. Uh, to make sure your lawn is end up end up buried in leaves and then use those leaves in other areas of the yard. I've talked about this in the last few months, uh, soil testing. Uh, this is a great time of year to do that if you have a uh, state testing facility, um, if you can drop it off at your um, at your county extension agent. I don't know how you go about soil testing or you can get soil tests that you can mail off from Amazon. I usually have one linked um, in my uh, Amazon store if you're interested in that. But this is the time of year to be, you know, pH testing and maybe general general soil testing. Uh, if, if you can get those, get those results back pretty quickly, if you need to lime or you need to make adjustments, this is a great time of year to be applying those things because generally the freeze thaw of the winter will help incorporate um, those amendments into the soil. Other than cool season turf, I don't do a lot of fertilizing uh, this time of year at all. I will fertilize my cool season vegetables and the cool season annuals like pansies and snapdragons and dianthus and that kind of thing uh, to make sure I'm getting the most out of those during the winter time. But other than that, I don't want to be doing uh, really any fertilizing. I'll, uh, that was in my February checklist and March checklist, um, April checklist. That's the best time of year to be uh, fertilizing our plants and pushing, and pushing new growth on them. So maybe the most important thing of all uh, for the month of November is definitely winterizing and, and thinking through um, how we're going to winterize things, what things we're just going to let the cold take, uh, things that we're going to try to uh, keep inside. Uh, for the winter, you know, all those decisions have to be made here pretty quickly uh, if you haven't gotten a frost in your in your area yet. So tropical plants that you bought, mandevillas and diplodenias and hibiscus and those kinds of things, it is possible to try to bring them in the house and, and, and save them for the winter. Uh, they, uh, they typically go through a lot of shock uh, through that process through the winter, but uh, they are they are definitely savable if you have, but you need really bright space for them. Definitely house plants. If you haven't already transitioned your house plants, uh, inside, um, you know, this is the time of year where you can you can repot them, um, you can fertilize them, uh, and then you can bring them in. Expect some sort, you know, some of them will be very happy with the transition in, and some of them uh, won't be. So you know, don't panic uh, if you if you get some decline uh, in a few things. Uh, your containers that you've used all season long, especially terracotta containers, are vulnerable to hard freezes, and so um, I. 
if you have something in a terracotta pot and you want to leave it in a pot over the winter, you might transition it to another container and then store your terracotta pots in your garage or someplace without soil in them because that freeze thaw can definitely, can definitely crack, uh, crack those open. Then it's going to be super important to uh, disconnect your hoses from the house if you had them connected all year long, drain the water out of them. If you have an irrigation system, it's definitely time to uh, you know, have it, um, um, especially like a, a drip irrigation system like mine. I'll take an air compressor and, and uh, stick it on one end of the pipe and try to blow the water, the rest of the water out of the uh, pipe. Most of it leaks out of the pipe because the pipe has holes in it, but there are pockets in there where uh, water stays in that pipe. Uh, and uh, again, you can, you can blow, blow that water out if you can. And w of course, winterizing your uh, in-ground irrigation system by taking off your backflow preventer and that kind of thing. Uh, definitely November is the time to work on that. So I like to pick one of these months in the uh, fall or winter to be the uh, maintenance month uh, for equipment. Uh, November is a good one because uh, if you're finishing up mowing, you may want to get the fuel uh, out of your mower or use some sort of fuel stabilizer in it. Uh, same thing with a chainsaw or anything else you run gas through. Uh, that ethanol that's in the, uh, in, in the gas can be very unfriendly uh, to the uh, plastics um, that, are in, that are in those equipment uh, if you don't use a, an ethanol-free uh, fuel in those things. Uh, and then cleaning up shovels and rakes and all the hand tools that you used. Uh, maybe um, uh, consider getting chainsaw blades sharpened and other tools sharpened. Um, if, you, if, you, if you can do them yourself or if there's somebody you drop them off with, this may be a good time of year just to have all those things uh, ready. Uh, for the uh, for the following year. So I've talked about this in every video this year about planning and writing down and journaling uh, what you're doing uh, in, the, in the garden and plans that you have for the future, things that you did this year, things that work, things that didn't work, uh, where you had your vegetables laid out this year so you can adjust them for next year because we don't want to keep putting them in the exact same places. Uh, on and on, just just writing down those things is, is super, super helpful. Uh, Shopping for seeds uh, right now is a good idea. So any of your spring uh, annual seeds, if you followed my channel this year, uh, all of these, a, a lot of the color you see behind me, uh, I did from seed here. And so, um, you know, it's, time, it's the time of the year to be shopping for those seeds and go ahead and get them in. So last but not least, uh, wintertime is a great time of year to be doing our hardscape projects. That's going to be paths and uh, retaining walls and edging and, and, and all of those kinds of projects. If you're in an area where the ground doesn't freeze, of course. And uh, you'll see, if you follow my channel, you'll see uh, lots of those kinds of projects uh, going on uh, during the winter time. So again, I can't cover everything that could be done in a uh, garden uh, during the uh, month of November. You would think that as we got to colder times, these videos would be shorter, but November is actually a big time transitional period uh, in the garden with uh, lots of things to do, uh, just to sh kind of shut the garden down uh, for the winter time and make sure it's in good shape uh, for when you start the spring and you're not having to start from a big cleanup uh, at that time of year. Thanks for watching. So one thing that's obviously been in every one of these uh, checklists is uh, weeding, uh, and that's part, you know, part of the fall maintenance. And this is the time of year that Chen uh, Hick. All right. Okay. Sorry. So. Okay.